Hey everybody, James again, doing the second part of this five part video. And this is about progesterone levels. Hey, check us out, mybridgesupply.com. Love my pups, subscribe to us, we'd appreciate it. Okay, so the previous one, we did an overview of what the progesterone curve looks, looks like. And now we're gonna talk about the beginning part of the progesterone curve. Remember, the back end of this is high up here and goes past past off screen to where we're gonna have well. We're talking about the first 15 days to the first 20 days of a dog that's in heat. All right, so this is the starting point. The whole thing is started on that we see first signs of blood on the ground, in some bedding, on some panties. This is zero, day zero, beginning the whole process. Before that, we might've seen some swelling, we might've seen some behavior where she's humping on other dogs, other dogs are humping her, she's sniffing dogs' butts, but that's the thing we want, day one. We want to know when that day was. All right, so then what happens? Well, progesterone level rises slowly, not very fast. It's sub one for typically about the first five days. And then it goes to this one point per day business, one point a day right here. It starts climbing. So after about four days, we're going to be at a progesterone level. If we were one here, we'll be at a progesterone level of five. So that's going to be about here. And that typically is about day nine, about day nine, that we would expect this dog to be ovulating. This is ovulation. And this is an important point for us because we would like to try to pinpoint that. So ovulation at a progesterone level of five, we're trying to find that point because typically we're breeding a dog two days after that. Why don't we breed the dog the day that it ovulates? because it takes a couple of days for the eggs to come from, the, from where the ovulation takes place into the uterus wall and be two days along to be mature enough to be fertilized. So presenting semen right here, day five would be two days early. That could still end up in a pregnancy, but certainly not would be, not be the optimum time. We want to breed this dog if we're doing a regular vaginal AI at a progesterone level of approximately 15. And that is in most dogs is going to occur something between day 11 and day 13. That is the normal point that you do an AI in a dog. That's what you'd expect to see. So there's some other Albert signs that you're going to see happening here. The first is there's going to be lots of blood. It's going to get pretty lot of deep red blood. She might be dropping on the ground. And then we will see it start to taper off about day nine. And here, typically, We've got more of a pink or even a vanilla color if we swap, swab the dog's back end on a paper towel. The color's got a lot lighter, and that normally is close to the point the dog's ovulating. Look, if you try to time it strictly off this, you're likely to get it wrong. But the more information you have, the better you are at getting the right time to AI. Now, does every dog get bred between day 11 and 13? Well, it would be really simple if that was the answer, because we wouldn't muck around with any of this stuff. We just look for the first signs of blood, set our calendar for day 11 and 13, breed twice and call it done. And that will work probably for 70% of dogs. Trouble is, is the other 30% are not getting pregnant or having small litters because that is not a reliable enough way of doing it. What we want to do is we want to get a progesterone test done and we want to find out when that dog is basically a 15. Or if we're going to do a surgical AI, the surgical AI is done a day later. This is a surgical, it's one day, or a transcervical. Surgical, surgical, can't spell it right. Surgical, sorry. Or a transcervical, TCI. Either one of those are done typically a day later when you do a vaginal on a level of 15. Why? Because the semen does not have to travel all the way up the vaginal to canal. If you look at the anatomy of a dog, here's the back end of a dog, here's the vulva here, and there's a canal that then ends up in a what's called a vestibule, and there's a little thing called the os, and that then goes up into the horns of the uterus. When we do a transcervical, we actually cut the belly, a little slit in the belly, we find these uterus and we actually put semen directly in them. When we do a transcervical, we go actually up into the beginning part of the horn and we we dump the semen right there. When we're doing an AI, we're dumping the semen generally in this area here. And in those situations, it takes a day for the semen to get from here to here. Consequently, we do it a day later. 
so that's good to know because sometimes, look, how many, how many of my AIs get involved with search calls? Probably 10%. But there's a very good reason that you might want to do a search call. And that's because you got, you're late. You just got a progesterone test done and you find your dogs that are 20 or higher. Then we're up in here, we want to do a transcervical or a surgical to have better results. So if your levels are above a 20, I recommend that you're late for a transcervical or a surgical. If your numbers are in that 12 to 18 range, vaginal's on the, on the table, do a vaginal. So what I like to do is I like to do two AIs, two, vag excuse me, two vaginal AIs, the first one about day 12, excuse me, the first one is about day 10 or 11, with a progesterone level of around 12. So I want to get in this region here. So I want to get approximately around a 12. And that's going to be my first AI. And then my second AI, I want to do around an 18. And that's going to be about two days apart. There's my second AI, that's my second AI. That works really well, I find. About a two day spread, and you're typically something around day 11 and day 13 to do two AIs, that seems to work really well. But the important part is we want to do it on a progesterone level of 12 and a progesterone level of approximately 18. Those are the two numbers we'd like to do a vaginal AI on. Okay, um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit more about how progesterone level rises. I'll just make a little area down here for that. So this is basically what you can already see on the graph. But I want to talk about this in a little bit more detail because I get a lot of people who will call me up and they'll say, oh, my dog's at this level right here. When do you think I'm going to be AI in the dog? And the answer is, most of the time, I've got a pretty good idea about when we're going to be doing that. So, here's what you expect to see. If you did a test on day zero, first blood, the level would be something around 0.5 or less. And it will stay that day till about day five, day six. And at that point, you expect the level to be about a one. Then you expect the level to go up about one point a day. So here's day seven, day eight, day nine, two, three. Actually, I should have made that day five. Actually, I got that rather wrong. Sorry, let's just readjust this. Day five will be about a one. Six is a two. Seven is a three. Eight is a four, nine is a five, ovulation. So there we go. There is what we expect to see. So you can use that when somebody gives you numbers. If that, the number of days is day nine, which is about a five, you're probably on track for an old dog. What happens after that? It almost doubles every day thereafter. So day 10, we're now at an eight. And day 11, we're at a 15. And that's where you're gonna start our first breeding somewhere in here. So after a 15, the next day, 22. Day after that, 30. It goes up quickly, 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 quickly. So people say, oh, my dog's progression level jumped up really quickly. No, probably what's going on is you're just this part of the slope and it goes up quickly once you get past the level of five. That's all that's going on, doubles about every day. All right, one last thing about this, split heats. And when should you breed your dog the first time? So in my book, any dog that's going to be bred should be at least a year old and should be in a decent weight. You don't want a really small dog to be bred on a first cycle or a second cycle at one year old. Give her a bit more time. Get some meat on her bones. So if your dog is really skitsy and acting like an absolute child, you might want to wait a little bit because the maturity factor may not be there. But I have bred many dogs who are just over a year old without any problems. Other people will say otherwise, but for me personally, it's been worked out fine. Um, so typically, you know, dogs that are a year old and it's their first heat cycle, they're probably the hardest ones to get pregnant. They tend to have what are called split heats. So what is a split heat? So a split heat looks like, we'll just put this on the graph right here. It's a dog that gets rolling and then the whole thing kind of starts messing up. So we're just gonna get rid of all this rubbish here real quickly. So everything's going along fine, and the dog looks like it's gonna be a normal dog, and we're just on our first progesterone level, and we got something that made sense, and we got a progesterone level in here of maybe, you know, a three. And then, you know, the, the vet said, and they talked to me, and we said, okay, it's a level of three, next day's a four, next day's a five, next day's an eight, next day's a 
uh, AI day, about four days out. Let's go test that dog in two days. Where would you expect that dog to be? So right here is when we got our first test back and his progesterone level was, uh, was a, um, a two, just for the sake of argument. So we think that we're still three, four, five, about five days out from doing the AI. Let's test in a couple of days. We come back, we'll do the progesterone level. Progesterone level's gone down. What, what's going on here? Now the progesterone level's back at a one. So, okay, we'll wait three days. We come back, we do another progesterone level and the dog's gone up to a four. And by the way, these are not numbers that you're necessarily gonna see. It's just an example of what you might see. The point here is this dog is doing this business here and it can do that. It may come all the way down to a progesterone level less than one, and it may, the bleeding process may completely stop. This is what is called a split heat. And it's very typical in younger dogs. Split heats are harder to breed, but what you gotta do is you gotta keep on testing every two, or few, two to three days, and because all of a sudden this dog will do that. And we've gotta to get to the point that we're doing this breeding, and it may just be a couple of days from going from a low number to being up to a 50, you don't wanna miss it. So in those situations, you are gonna spend some money on testing. That's just the way that it is. But be aware of split heats, they do happen. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your dog. Doesn't mean that your dog can't get pregnant. Um, all of those things are quite normal in younger dogs and it's all part of the process. Um, we're about done with the breeding process. The last thing I wanna talk about just really quickly on this is prolapsed vaginas is something that you can see in dogs where they get a really start getting really swollen, a part of the vagina poops out the back end. I have a whole video on vaginal prolapses. I have successfully uh, bred many dogs with vaginal pro pro prolapses. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes it does require a stitch to kind of hold the lips of the labia together to stop the, uh, the whole vagina telescoping out. It sounds terrible, but it's not really as bad as you think it is. And it and it's basically happens because progesterone levels have risen. And once the progesterone levels, once you've got past this heat stage, normally that all shrinks back and it's completely normal. All right, so I think we've just can now tick off uh, this one here. The next one's gonna be the pregnancy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to us please, bye.